Okay, so I was showing you just a couple of things I, I have here. Let's in case you you miss them. Uh, I have a, a very early take on on the attic of scratches. You can see it's pretty much the same as uh, the same layout. Okay, I know the the, the graphics it looks horrible. Uh, I kind of like that that, that spider web though. Um, you can see the, the chest is in the same place, uh, the round window, even a chair that was, it actually made it into the final game, it's hidden somewhere in a dark corner. Um, yeah, it's uh, the first test we ever did for, for Scratch, we we're just uh, trying. And the cursors in, in the game, here are my, my hands actually, so uh, whenever you are moving the, the cursor that's my, my hand pointing at, at something we just took the picture and uh, turn it turn them into into cursors I can't believe I still I still kept this uh, this picture and finally the uh, some of the blueprints we created for Blackwood Manor the um, uh, the, the house remains pretty much the same, but the the grounds themselves, as, as you can see, some of it has, has changed a bit. The, the grip is not as close to the house and you see some uh, surrounding lakes that were removed because it was uh, just too much, too much work to put that into the game. So um, anyway, yeah, I think we are ready to get back to action and we are back in to the main hall. Yeah, cool. Um, we have grabbed a key. Actually, we have our uh, our tools from the from the garage, so we are ready to go into the crypt. And on my way there, I'm going to uh, yes answer a few of your of your questions. That uh, you, there were a couple of interesting questions. Left in the in the chat, um, Joachim asked how, how, what, what things we learned from from scratches that uh, the the failures and and things that uh, that were uh, positive uh, learnings and uh, yeah like I said a bit I think the the design of scratches relate too much on the on triggers especially the the first day so that um, there were certain things happening behind the scenes that players uh, didn't know you know they didn't change they didn't realize when the game world changed so uh, in asylum when there's a uh, one of uh, such changes uh, they, they are we don't have that many uh, triggers, you know. Uh, everything that happens in the game is, a, or any progress in the story is a consequence of an action from the player. Uh, but if there's a change in the game world that is, uh, uh, is not a consequence of such actions, it's very evident. We make it very, very clear that something has changed and you can uh, perform new actions. That wasn't evident in Scratches. The very first day is guesswork okay what to do next what has changed what has happened uh, oh about this location um, I recall many many fights here in general in some uh, locations of the game because they are very very detailed but I wanted shadows everywhere you know dark corners everywhere so there's a, a lot of uh, detail in the house that you can't see because I insisted on having, uh, you know, really uh, darkness all around the place. So even if you can't see it, there's a, a very interesting ar architecture here. Uh, also in the in the greenhouse, I think it's a location covered in shadows. St uh, still too much stuttering, folks. Uh, too much, too much lag. Let me know. I don't know what else to do. Nothing has changed. <laughs> mm. Okay, maybe I'm moving the screen too fast and my upload stream can't can't deal with it. Okay. 
if you recall there, there was uh, this wire in the this metal wire in the second teaser we just can't we can't open it by hand now but we have these uh, pliers and we can remove it yeah I think it's doing much much better now um, so we are back in the decay encrypt uh, not much has changed in this location since the second teaser. The music has, has changed, the description of course, because uh, it's, a, it's a different character. Uh, it's in the grip now. And if you remember... Uh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to lower the video bitrate a bit, hang on. Hang on to your horses. Let's see if it's actually very low already, but let's let's make it even lower. Okay, let's hope that improves the transmission a bit. Uh, no, trust me, 100 uh, kilobytes of bitrate it would be uh, horrible, just just horrible. Um, okay. Oh, and we have a body here. So if you remember uh, our uh, character, which we know it's uh, Dr. Christopher Milton from the second teaser, he was carrying a body. And he wasn't sure about the tradition of uh, in the Blackwood family. Uh, you know, there was a tradition where uh, the, the husband went uh, in, the, in the upper uh, coffin, or maybe it was the... The, the wife in the lower coffin uh, but I can tell you that Christopher could not put Blackwood in the upper coffin because it was too heavy for him he was just uh, dealing uh, with this corpse all by himself and he just wasn't able to, to put the corpse on the, on the upper coffin so yes, that is definitely James Blackwood in the lower coffin uh, that's one, one mystery we can put to rest for sure. Um, we have a uh, puzzle here. Um, we have, yeah, the rock is actually what. Well, forgot something already. I forgot something, but I realized before I. I made a fool of myself. Um, I only found one body inside, but there were two plaques. Something was definitely out of place here. Yeah. Yeah, there's a body missing, apparently. I need to grab a mirror from, uh, from the house first. your folks having a better quality in the video than what I'm seeing here because all I see are really big pixels. Uh, we're really really sorry about that because uh, our upstream speeds in Argentina are just uh, very very low in general. So uh, we need this mirror to solve the puzzle in the crypt it's a pretty cool puzzle. Um, so, um, and someone else, I think, I just left everything I was doing to watch this. Wow, thank you. I'm so happy you're so uh, enthusiastic about these uh, live streams. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to, to be doing this, really. Um, someone asked about okay. 
someone asked about uh, publishers rushing us out the door I can't find the question now I think but uh, oh yes how long the yeah how long did publishers give us for the, the production of the game okay we none at all because we uh, produced most of the um, most of the game without a publisher okay so we only started signing contracts when we were close or rather close to game completion um, I think we should have signed even later in production like when it's beta and we are almost ready to to release um, signing you know a commitment with the publisher it's uh, it's a really really stressful thing you know okay uh, I should have a stone here. I have no stone. The prospect of witnessing the decaying body of a baby wasn't very tempting. The info was not very shaded and the rest it was too dark to make out what the black read. Okay, you can actually read the black anyway. You can see the letter R, but we are going to, to solve the puzzle, don't worry. Um, I do remember some sort of reference here. This coffin was half open and I was horrified to glimpse the remains of a dead cat in it. Yeah, yeah, that was the funny reference. I, I thought that reference was in the teaser, but I was wrong. It's, uh, it's in the actual game. As you know, cats have a uh, lot to do with the story of the game. Uh, cats are very, very important. <laughs> We're going to talk about cats in a while. Okay, um, where's that damned stone? outside I can't believe how much I have forgotten about this game it doesn't even feel like I designed it <laughs> anymore uh, okay so there should there should be a stone around this place that we must use to break a window let me. I have my notes here. Look at the plaques and grab a nearby stone. Okay, it is inside the crypt. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. We had to look at the, at the plaques. Okay, so it's not. It's not so badly designed, this, this puzzle. I mean, you, you need to explore the place. I'm just assuming too much. So, uh, we're going to grab this stone. The hotspot is a bit out of place, but we can definitely grab it. I'm going to save often, folks. Don't worry. In fact, I'm going to save right now. Because you never know. Okay. Um... Okay, so uh, we are going to... Oh! We're going to tie the mirror here. I need more light. Okay, first we need more light to reflect, to know where the... Yes, I am reading a walkthrough. And your hints do not help me because the transmission is like uh, two minutes old. So I'm right now reading hints you told me like two minutes ago. So, yeah. It's... Ah, I missed 
the window. So I need to go down. Okay, I do like this puzzle, you know, which makes sense in a way. It's pretty uh, logical. You just you miss the window and you uh, you need to go below to grab the rock, and that's standard some some players. But um, it's okay. I, I think that this would happen in real life, you know. <laughs> so I, I like puzzles that feel, uh, yeah, exactly, uh, realistic puzzles that uh, you know you you will be solving in an actual grid. If if you need like, I guess you can do it. Do this. I never tried it. Uh, reflecting like in the mirror. I, th I think it should work. And if it doesn't, it's an adventure game, so we we can do all, all this stuff. Okay, now we can definitely make out the letter R on the far left of the black, and nothing else. So, uh, this is probably the most uh, complicated puzzle in the game. Uh, you need to... I mean, it is a small coffin, so you can deduct the letter R has to do with uh, the child of the Blackwood family and since in in the in the nursery we saw the words bean we are uh, we must deduct that the name of the of the child has to be Robin so it's not the word bean it's part of the name Robin um, oh, we actually need, since we have the crowbar, we can turn off the water for uh, for the whole manor. Um, so now that we know the name, we can uh, we can solve the combination to a box we are going to find in just a few moments. Oh, we need to turn this. Uh, we need to... I remember that! Okay, so we need to uh, hit the crowbar with a, with a hammer and then pick again the crowbar. We should have water now, hopefully. No, I actually... I, I uh, never wanted to dumb down puzzles because I uh, I don't think players are are dumb if, if you know uh, I uh, I actually think they are very uh, more than capable to, to solve challenging puzzles so I, I want to I want to, to, to challenge them with, with really interesting puzzles and uh, no, no, there was a, if, in fact, when I created scratches, scratches, I wanted to make, you know, a really hardcore game uh, for, for fans of, of adventure games, and uh, I am surprised so many more people, uh, you know, uh, people who doesn't play adventure games regularly were so uh, fascinated with the game. I think it's very, very difficult. Um, Asylum is going to be uh, a bit easier, but only because I uh, am more interested in the story now and uh, not not so much the, uh, the the puzzles this time. So the door how the door to the greenhouse was stuck, but we have oil and we can open now. Um, this is a very interesting location, and I love the, what uh, Cellar of Rats did with the music here. It sounds like glassy, all of it sounds sounds glassy. We have a uh, another rather complicated puzzle here. There's a shiny thing here, there was some kind of shiny object beneath the grating. Uh, we need to have water running here. So if you take a look at all this uh, drainage, uh, there are, there's a plant uh, covering it, right? 
so it's it's uh, the branches of of this bush are uh, covering the drain so we need to to cut the bush with the players I think no no actually I think there are some pliers upstairs. We have another letter from Blackwell. Yes, there are still puzzles in Asylum, don't worry. We have each an adventure game, we have we have puzzles. And uh, just not that many. We have a strangely attractive plant. And here we have an interesting letter from Blackwood, very, very important to understand something at the end of uh, the game. Um, he, uh, he mentions that due to this African curse that he's convinced it exists, it's uh, infecting the, the, the entire grounds of the Blackwood Manor. He believes that the, all, all his plants are dying just because of this African curse. Uh, again, because there's this uh, tension between the supernatural and scientific in Scratches, it could be that due to his feeble state of mind, Blackwood is not taking proper care of plants anymore. So uh, the fact that plants are dying could be his own doing. We need to keep that in mind. Uh, oops. Here are the pliers, okay, cool, we're doing much better today. We're going to cut a few leaves, and no, there's nothing else here. We are going to... Large house. We pick the hose, we put it here, and we put this in the plants here. And we needed to... Uh, the shovel is too stuck here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is try to put some water, okay. Okay, the water is running, so uh, I did manage to turn on the water, and now with this action, the ground is softer, and we are able to remove the shovel. Hey, hey I do remember all that, see? <laughs> I'm doing much better today, come on, come on, we can do this, we can do this, we can finish scratches, yeah, we can. So, uh, now, we cut the plant, okay, we need to look closer. We cut the plant, the branches that were um, stuck in the in the drain. No sound effects. We used the sound effects from a package known as uh, Sound Ideas. Uh, it's a great package of, of audio effects. It's rather over overused now, so much that you you keep hearing them in series and even movies. So uh, I don't recommend using it. Uh, as much as a few years ago. Um, okay, so wait, we actually need to turn off the water, remove the hose, open again the water, so it's flowing uh, along the drains, and the shiny object that was stuck in here is suddenly gone. It's not gone. Why? Ah! See, this is... I, I kind of... And, and we, you can actually hear the key, well, it is a key, uh, like um, flowing along with the water. So I, I kind of like that. That's something I would definitely do again. Like, uh, you're expecting, okay, I open the water and the key will just go. And no, it needs, it needs a bit more time so that water uh, takes it away. Uh, I didn't, I didn't recall that, but now that I 
played, I can, I'm kind of satisfied with this, with this puzzle. But still, I think some of the puzzles in this third day are a bit hit and miss, you know. So some are a bit far, far fetched. So there's a small lake in here, and uh, the idea is that you you make the connection that the water from the greenhouse must lead into this pond. And if you look closer now, you're going to see another key! And another key we can add to our collection of keys in Scratches. And you know what I'm going to do now? I am going to save the game because we are making lots of progress today. Yes. And... About that scientific versus supernatural tension, I can tell you that... Uh, okay, wait. Here. I can tell you that in Asylum we are uh, doing something uh, similar to that. There's going to be a similar dualism in the story. At first it was... Th there's a, a very similar path I, wa I have walked with both projects. At first Scratches was going to be more supernatural and then uh, many many logical things, uh, scientific things such as the, the thalidomide pills we find in the main bedroom crept into the game. Uh, something similar happened in Asylum over the course of its uh, production and so much that at the end you won't be sure if what you have just experienced is uh, supernatural or there's something, you know, there's a full scientific explanation behind it. So, with this small key we open this drawer. We have we have a letter from Milton here addressed to Catherine uh, James' wife before she was uh, murdered and uh, Blackwood found this letter so we did this could lead to believe some players that um, if James found this letter he may th have thought that Catherine was cheating on him with Christopher and he murdered Catherine but no, that that's actually that was actually a long-running theory among fans of Scratches. Um, this letter was this is possibly the only red herring in the in the entire game. I intentionally wrote this letter, leading leading you to believe that Catherine was uh, cheating on James. But uh, sorry, this this letter that Milton addressed to Catherine. I, th I thought I think I mentioned it the other way around. Um, anyway, he just tells Catherine that he's he's very 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 worried that he needs to to uh, to meet her and uh, you know uh, he's just uh, ashamed of what they did uh, years ago. And uh, this this special this special uh, last paragraph. Uh, whatever you do with this letter, make sure James doesn't feel anything suspicious. I'd rather have you destroy this, though. Extreme situations require extreme measures. So uh, it does feel like they are doing things behind uh, James' back. So, uh, okay, so now I am, I think this was, okay, but <laughs> This is a question I received. Uh, why we just used the subtitles to change the combination? It was just too much work to change the sliders. The engine was very uh, rudimentary back then. We did not support uh, patches of small graphics on the on top of other graphics, so I would have to have rendered all the possible combinations. <laughs> so it was too much, too much work. Um, but anyway, uh, with the letter R and the word being, we can we can deduct the combination using the letters from the 
from those uh, toy blocks and okay I don't I did take note of the you don't expect me to recall the, the exact number right uh, it's five five nine oh nine Okay, cool. And whoa! And oh, we have another uh, small puzzle here. This was a nice idea, you know. Uh, these boxes actually exist. I don't recall exactly what. Ah! My monitor is, is too dark. Oh, okay, here we go. You need to uh, move <coughs> the center. The, the, lo the logic behind the puzzle is the central uh, lock, and here you see the mechanism. The central lock, uh, you need to just turn it left, uh, remove uh, one of the, uh, the the other right lock, then turn it to the other side and remove the other lock. So the, the, the mechanism, the center mechanism, allows you to uh, to unlock each. Uh, each part accordingly. Uh, just another puzzle to, to stamp you. A few more moments. And uh, now this is okay. This is there's there's only one place left we need to enter, which is the the church. So uh, we are heading there now. Oh, uh, the production. Oh, okay. More questions. Did you have alternate ideas for the inventory system in scratches? No, no, scratches. In fact, uh, some players have complained that at some point you have the inventory full of useless items. I just wanted to make a real, you know, classic adventure game with uh, lots of items, lots of uh, combinations in items, you know. Um, so, no, it, I know it's not very elegant. Uh, it just, that was the only, you know, uh, idea I had for it. But yeah, Isilum is a... it's very very different. Uh, in Asylum we, we are taking cues from uh, from modern game design and um, approach to game development. We are using what's called a diegetic interface that it's contained in the in the game itself. So your, your journal, you use your journal to uh, Take, keep track of all the stuff happening in the game, even your inventory, and it works really well. Uh, I, I was, I had doubts about the system at first, but we have tested already, and it definitely works. Uh, production of Asylum, I think around 70, a bit more than 70 percent, maybe. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit more about that uh, later. And okay. that echoed in the quietness of the area. It made me wonder about the secrets that had been kept safe and undisturbed in here for years. I actually think the writing in, in the game slowly kept getting better, you know, and as, as, as the game progressed. This is a very cool moment. Uh, it's very, very unsettling uh, yeah we, we have some pretty pretty powerful moments in this in this final day you know this uh, there's this I like this this song it reminds me of a song in Sorg Nemesis one of my favorite first-person games uh, I, I actually think I um, I sent that reference to to Blab so uh, if you've if you find some similarities, it, that's because it was uh, inspiration behind this this theme. Um, and yeah, I, I love the, again this feeling of impending doom in the third day, like oh, something really really ugly is about to happen. No, just keep breathing here. And oops, a nail. Okay, now, 
in the following sequence you're, you're supposed to uh, discover a hidden mechanism here. I mean, of course, there's something in this in this chapel. Uh, James Blackwood used to spend too much time praying here. Uh, this is one of the reasons why uh, Catherine and, and Milton began uh, doubting about his uh, mental faculties. But we're going to learn now that what James did here was actually plot something to get rid of the curse. We can see <clears throat> that th there has to be something uh, hidden here, of course. And the idea is you have the uh, this statue of, of Jesus here, and okay, you can see a nail is missing. I received actual complain letters about the fact that you insert the nail into Jesus as if you know we are desecrating this uh, symbol in some way uh, I really don't don't know what to think about that because it's just this is a mechanism there is no allegory here I'm not making any religious commentary, I'm just putting a nail in a statue, so I, I am sorry if this offended some uh, religious people. I don't know what to say. It's just a, it's just a mechanism, okay? Nothing uh, weird. And... And... Uh, that should have on something okay wait a second um hmm that's funny I think I'm missing something. Okay, I, I did forget about, about this one, you know? I did forget about this one. I am... I need to make something else here. But I can't remember what. Let's see if... Ah, yes. Uh, yes, there's... Yeah. Yeah, 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 hang on, hang on, there was, uh, I needed to remove, there's a lock in here, mm-hmm, <laughs> Ah. Okay, I need to. That was pointless. No, no, I don't have to use the hammer on on the nail. Oh wait. About the in resign now. Okay, I'm going to check the walkthrough because I don't. I've, I've really forgotten what to do now. Uh, oh. Oh, 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 okay, yeah, 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 fine. Okay, yes, this makes perfect sense. I actually need to, uh, to open the, yeah, 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 yes, yes because it's in the way, so uh, I need to remove the slab so that the mechanism is activated. This It's a pretty cool animation there. Now we go down below. Uh, from here, yeah, 
and we're going to use one of our lightest matches. The lamp didn't have any... Oh crap! Uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. We have uh, a candle here. I was, I was getting worried. I, I had forgotten what needs to be done. Uh, cool. Ah! Another mask. But no, this one is uh, it's harmless, you know. You know, if if Blackwood was so bloody worried about African courses and masks, just just what he's why he's going to keep more masks. In, you know, around him. It doesn't make any sense. Um, this this music, the, the progression in the music, I keep talking about it, but I love again what Vlad did here. Uh, it really feels like, you know, it just keeps getting worse and worse as they progresses. So, uh, this is one of the final letters before the murder of, of Catherine. Um, James is actually beginning to suspect, James beginning to suspect that uh, Catherine realized what he's doing. What he doesn't know yet is that uh, Christopher was also uh, partnering with uh, Catherine to, to try and put some sense into James' mind by now. Um, Blackwood never, never realizes uh, that Milton was betraying him in a way. He, he dies before that. Um, actually, no. He's he supposedly we we have to assume that James has discovered the letter we the, we read before, and uh, he kept it hidden. So, uh, but maybe it was Milton who kept that uh, kept that letter under lock. Um, okay, so this is the last part of, uh, of James' journal. Here, James explains uh, that he's going to try a, uh, a way to lift the curse from the mansion and the family. And he writes down the directions to, to perform this uh, counter course and uh, it's what Michael wants to do now to try and remove the curse so uh, we're going to grab this uh, branch that is from a special African tree and we are actually I'm going to save the game this is very very important because we learned very important lesson yesterday. Save often, save early. Um, even though you can die in scratches. Okay, you know something else I didn't tell you. Um, I did tell you yesterday that I I'm also using past tense in the descriptions of Asylum because I just feel they uh, I just think they have a better feel to it for the kind of story I want to tell. Uh, but they also establish something that I think need to, needs to be established very early in the game. And that is that you can't die. Uh, these aren't games about, uh, you know, uh, dying. Uh, I don't think you need to die in a horror game for uh, to make it scary, you know. So uh, as, long, as, as soon as we put that out of the way, I think it's better so that players don't have the wrong expectations. So uh, Michael survives this event in Blackwood Manor and the protagonist in Asylum will also survive them. That's not a spoiler. That's just how the story works. And don't worry, it, you will be scared to death as well. Um, by now we should have received, not yet, probably need to speak with Jerry. Oh, no! I need to speak with Bailey. No, I need to read 
the newspaper. Okay, we have many dates now from the letters uh, we read. So if you know the mechanism with the attic is that we we go upstairs to check on uh, new um, new articles that may contain useful information. And okay, wait. Since we are here, we are going to we are going to do a couple of things. Uh, we already know uh, about the amulet we need to create. So uh, I'm just going to grab this claw and to remove it with these pliers. Yes, sir. And I need to grind this. Uh, oh, actually, I am forgetting. <laughs> I was forgetting about the, the biggest puzzle in, in the game. Uh, I can't prepare the amulet yet because we need to do some grave digging first. Yeah. But I should be able to read the um, newspaper now. And there's going to be. No. Not yet. Um, damn. Not yet. What am I missing then? Hmm. Why did I make this game so bloody difficult? Oh, since I'm here, I'm sure you remember. You recognize this this painting and this is a really scary painting uh, I actually decided to use this painting because I have a, a book of, uh, of horror tales that was um, I, I I'm keeping it since my childhood and they used that painting for the for the cover I always thought it was creepy as hell and this one we didn't know about this but this that painting with the two kids and hands in the window supposedly have a um, it's kind of an urban legend with an interesting story behind it uh, several of its owners supposedly uh, committed suicide or, or died. I don't know. At, at some point, they were they were selling that painting uh, on eBay. So I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even sure who who's, who would buy it. Okay, now people making fun of my of my accent. Sounds very Latino. It's 1 p.m. So wow, we still uh, we still need to do lots of things. We could... okay. Let's try speaking with the cherry. Yes? Hi, Jerry. Michael, I was worried about you. Are you doing okay? Yes, I'm fine. And I think I know the identity of my intruder. Tell me, who is it? James Blackwood. The Blackwood person? It's an interesting conversation. Michael, are you serious? That the ghost of the murderer is roaming the house. I'm not talking about his ghost, Jerry. Um, I'm talking about him. What the heck do you mean? The novel of I mean, scratches will be written in the in the past tense. Yes, house. it is written what? like that. How is that possible? It makes sense. After murdering his wife and realizing what he has done, he begs for help to Christopher Milton, who fakes his death. Milton, the previous owner, Michael, you're losing your mind. Even if he managed to hide himself, how did he survive all this time? Milton has been missing for years. Hmm. Good point. But I'm sure a desperate man like Blackwood would have found So him. Michael is fully yeah, convinced that Blackwood is still alive now. Um Oh. Yeah, I have it right here. That's the date we needed. Uh Jerry will um Jerry. Jerry pass, uh, gives this date to uh, to Michael, and now we have uh, we can read the article we were missing. So Michael is uh, convinced about uh, about Blackwood, of course, until he founds the other body. Okay, cool. So now. Um, there's not actually much, much, much left to do. 
Um, we're going to quickly read the newspaper upstairs. We're going to make two more phone calls. Uh, you may recall Bailey, the police officer, the retired police officer who worked on the Blackwood case. And Bailey's number. Okay. This uh, uh, explains the nature of, of the murder, uh, the police officer who investigated it, uh, what happened with Eva Mariani. Uh, actually, we, we don't know where very much of what what was of, of, of Eva after all these uh, events. She's probably a famous photographer now. She's back to Italy. Um, and of course, here's the number of, of uh, Mr. Police Officer, retired police officer Bailey. We must assume that it was Christopher Milton who uh, took note of his number. Who knows? Maybe he was feeling like getting in touch with uh, Mr. Bailey and put uh, the mystery to rest, confess, you know, because clearly he, he couldn't study anymore. Uh, that never happened, of course. Um, the name Bailey, I decided to use the name Bailey after the Baileys, the British uh, cream liquor, you know. Uh, actually, very good liquor, yeah, that's... There you have an interesting piece of trivia. And I have another piece of trivia for you. The original actor of uh, Mr. Bailey was going to be Matt Clark from Barrow Hill and Bracken Tor uh, fame. But he couldn't, he, he needed to sound very old. Okay, hang on, I kept, I took note of the number here. Um, he couldn't uh, uh, make an old voice, so uh, just it didn't happen. He he still hates me for that uh, to this day. But well, I need needed another another voice. Uh, nine four one. Four. Four. Good day, the National Bank of Northumberland. Robert Blake. <laughs> that was the other number. <laughs> uh, okay. This is the number from the construction contract. Okay, the one we found on the on the safe. Uh, of course, we find it on Sunday, so we can make the phone call on Sunday. Um, so now, now that it's Monday and past 10 a.m., we can make this the, this phone call. Registered as Christopher Edward Milton. This important. He's a doctor. I'm sorry, sir. I can't give you that kind of information. It's all right. I work in the hospital with him. My name is Dr. Mike. Mike Rutherford. That's a uh, one of the uh, founders of the band Genesis, my favorite uh, band, and uh, I used. That name uh, as a sorry, nice reference. We had that a few years ago, but he's no longer a customer of the bank. It seems he's no longer a customer of this bank. Oh, I see. The good old Christopher still playing pranks on me. That old joker. <laughs> Sir, you said your name was. Um, I won't waste your time anymore. Good day. Okay. We actually <sighs> we're going to dial again. Uh, there's something we need to know about about this this bank. One nine, one two nine four one four four. How did he know uh, it was uh, Michael again? Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, I choose the wrong option. If you choose to ask about James Blackwood, the piece of information you get 
is that the bank account is still active. Uh, we don't need to do this to complete the game, but you do need that bit of information to make full sense of the story. I'm going to explain everything anyway, so uh, let me... Uh, Mr. Bailey's number... Uh, where's Mr. Bailey number? Oh, come on. Don't tell me I didn't took note of it. Okay. Okay, let's go back upstairs again and take note of the proper number now. Okay. Daily. It's 01665 uh, That's Bailey. And as we have downstairs again, I'm going to tell you that that uh, clerk from the National Bank of Northumberland, that's uh, Dominic Brewer, an old friend of mine, uh, who's actually a a very good actor. He's been doing uh, plays all around uh, the UK, uh, an actually popular place, and he's uh, playing the role of uh, Lenny, or Lenny Huntings in Asylum. And I must say, it's um, an incredible, an incredible job. You are going to love that character. So. Um, uh, we can talk with Mr. Bailey. Six, six, five. Hooray for realism and putting old phones in video games. Two, one. We actually did uh, the whole. 10 animations for that uh, dial, you know. Who's this? Hi, are you Mr. William Bailey? That's me. And you are? Yes, my name is Michael Arthur. I'm a journalist for a local newspaper in Rothbury. I see. And what's this all about? Well, you're the former police chief of this town, aren't you? And you were once in charge of a famous, or should I say, infamous case here. Uh, you will have some um, some choices in well, conversations yes, in asylum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, but it's um, the, the system we devised for the game. It's more context-based. You, um, you ask about a subject. You can keep talking about that that subject. And uh, it's not the, the, your typical adventure Please game options Bailey, like uh, ask this please question please or this one. I think dialogues have a more natural flow no with this approach. The renowned William Bailey Roth. Oh, all right, son. Spare me the nonsense. What is it you want to know? Well, in the first place, what did Ava Mariani see exactly? Okay, people who is uh, who has to go, don't worry. We're going to upload this, and thank you for uh, for the for the kind words. And Blackwood was automatically deemed guilty. And here we have he found digging his wife's son. This Why information will be revealed here before a jury. When you're someone as renowned and famed as James Blackwood was, you can pretty So Bailey thinks that Blackwood uh, covered everything. And he was Blackwood was a very wealthy uh, man, okay, and powerful as well. He died shortly after the accusation. What happened to Dr. Christopher Milton? How should I know? You bet 
I think we were originally going to have options in this conversation, just uh, decided to make it a single single that dialogue. I'm not too fond of having options because, you know, I, I prefer more uh, a better flow in game dialogues. I don't like when the, you know, the option is uh, stuck in the screen and the character just looks at you expectantly as, you know, revealing some kind of uh, game puppet. Uh, I like more and more realism in that regard. Mariani says Everything sounds so the throat of Catherine it looks ripped. Okay, this is another important detail. <coughs> no, 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 sir, not at all. I'm just trying to figure this out. Like, why a proper autopsy was never done. An autopsy to him. Please, sir, this is very important to me and I could really use your help. So we were all operating under the assumption that, okay, if Catherine Blackwood was murdered, uh, okay, someone had found the body, right? But here's the big, a big twist. I don't think I understand, sir. Listen, son, that cold-blooded bastard murdered his wife, God knows why, but he and his fancy doctor did the impossible to hamper our investigations. You don't have to be a brilliant detective to realize there's always a reason behind a murder. Nobody has ever found out why Blackwood did what he did. Psychopaths don't need any reasons. And James Blackwood... This is the longest dialogue in the game, actually. There's got to be something else. I can't believe Blackwood flipped just like that one sunny day. It doesn't make any sense. People flip, son. You could be flipping right now without... That's a pretty disturbing line, people flip, son. <laughs> You could be flipping right now without Well, then knowing. tell me how Blackwood reacted when you pulled his wife from beneath the ground. Uh, I beg your pardon. Big I mean, question. Catherine Blackwood's body when you dug in the garden of the manor. Like I said, they hampered the investigation. We never managed to set one foot inside the manor. Okay. What kind of bloody gentleman? So you have, have been living with a corpse but in the garden all this time, Michael. Body? That's exactly what I'm telling you. But, but wait, th this doesn't make any sense. Stop wasting my time, damn it. I was enjoying my retirement until you had the brilliant idea of calling me. I don't want to hear anything else about this case ever again. Please, Mr. Bailey, don't... I kind of lost track of what we did this day. Okay. Why? I've been thinking about what you told me. And you could be onto something there. But I'm worried about your safety now. This could be dangerous. What do you mean by dangerous? Well, let's suppose you're right. And James Blackwood is indeed hiding somewhere inside the house. He's a madman, a murderer. And your life could be in danger. Jerry, if James Blackwood is still alive, he'd be nothing more than a harmless... So notice in the man. conversation how Jerry is suddenly... He sounds worried. Uh, up until now, Jerry was dismissing everything Michael was, was saying. Um, but suddenly he sounds like worried and he's urging Michael to leave the house. Of knowing. I'm already too much into this, Jerry. And if I don't know what happened inside this house, I, I won't be able to sleep again. Who knows? Maybe this whole episode inspires me to write that ending. I'm sorry. It I does. Can't this now, Jerry. It's it's too late. I I can't believe this. I don't understand you. Doesn't the possibility of spending another night in that house with a creepy old man hiding in the basement scare you? I know what you're trying to do. Goodbye, Jerry. Michael. Michael. It's dangerous. Do you hear me? It's dangerous. You have to leave that place. I'll keep you informed. I love the acting by Jonathan Bokes uh, in these conversations. He he sounds he sounds just just great. So um, Jerry is suddenly urge, urging us to leave the house, and there's a, there's a reason for that. Uh, he messed up. So we should be we 
should have received yes sir um, so here's the note of eviction uh, the, ex the explanation behind this letter this uh, yeah this uh, eviction letter is that uh, Jerry has uh, messed up the acquisition of Blackwood Manor you know he's a real estate agent um, but some some buildings are are uh, destined to be like uh, historical buildings. The the National Trust uh, keeps track of this, so we don't know the whole story. It doesn't matter really. But uh, thing is, yeah, Jerry forgot to mention a little detail. Uh, he he acquired Blackwood Manor by wrongful means. So suddenly, uh, uh, Michael has to leave this place as soon as possible. Okay, so now what we can do is, uh, if you recall, there was a bike with a dynamo in the garage, and we can try and actually charge the car battery. This is 100% uh, physics, it works, it is, uh, it's pure science, it definitely works. Uh, so we're going to put the battery here and we grab the sorry here okay so we I have just uh, wired the dynamo to the to the car battery and I'm going to do this and now the battery has a bit of charge we don't need to charge the whole battery uh, as you may know or not, uh, I didn't know this actually until I uh, until we created scratches uh, because I don't like cars. I, I don't have a car. Um, the car cars don't need a fully charged battery to to start, you know, working. Uh, they charge the battery with the fuel itself. So just with a bit of charge, it's enough to uh, to yeah turn on the car. Okay. And uh, we are here. Listen to the music now. So Michael knows that uh, he can leave the house now. This song is beautiful. Um, but he he feels responsible for what is happening in Blackwood Manor now because he feels like that he has disturb whatever dark entity was um, was uh, uh, stalking the place so now he feels that he uh, it's up to him uh, to 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 remove this curse from the manor okay it is 4 p.m. so this puzzle is uh, extra annoying because the um, the hotspot for digging up the location is slightly, uh, you know, moved a few pixels to one side. Um, check out that that strange-looking sky. There are many different shades I used to create uh, these uh, these uh, skies. So uh, it's a, it's nice, you know, if uh, if you're playing the game, uh, every time the the, the hour changes, uh, you know, just ju ju just go outside and check the the different skies. Uh, some of them are are, are pretty cool. Uh, whoa! So. Infamous puzzle. Most devoid of life. Okay. Oh no. Where's the exit? Okay, here. 
it can be sometimes difficult to navigate the game. Uh, we, we, we made sure that uh, Asylum is, is much, much easier. Okay, uh, so here's what we can do now. We grab the shovel, uh, which is here. And we can use it anywhere in the in the in the ground. This is a very devious puzzle. I, I admit it's it's horrible. Um, it's very very difficult. So since the game allows you to to dig up anywhere in the ground, it can take a lot of tries to to find the right spot. So here's the shadow. If you can see, here's the shadow from that tower um, and Eva took the photograph from uh, this or, or this this window uh, while she was cleaning the house uh, so um, we have everything we need to solve this puzzle here I think there's an, another problem actually um, the the you know Hot, the, 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 the item, the inventory item is actually a, a square and there's something that we we call like the, the hot spot of the inventory item itself you know um, it can be either corner or the center of the item itself in the case of scratches I used the center of the item uh, and that wasn't easily established. Established. So what you need to do actually is uh, place the shovel, the center of the shovel, on the exact tip of the shadow. And mm, that's not quite correct. Okay, we'll try again. Or maybe no. We'll try again. Okay, listen, do you hear the music? This is really spooky. Another decision by Vlad from Seller of Rats. Instead of uh, putting like a really creepy dark theme, he went for something more sad and melancholic, you know. Uh, we are, this is a very sad moment. I mean, imagine just dying and you are even your body is forgotten, nobody knows what happened. Um, so I think that for the Director's Cut Edition what I changed is that the, um, the active corner of the inventory cursor was in the bottom right. So this is why I needed to put the, um, like the, you know, the plate of the shovel on the tip of the tower. So anyway, uh, what we're going to do now, I try to pull out a tooth without success. We're going to use the pliers. I'm sorry, Catherine, but we have the tooth now. It's a very beautiful track, you know. I have to confess, I, I, I have forgotten about this, uh, this incidental. Uh, Themes in scratches. I, I'm just. I'm actually relieving them like right now, and I, I can see why people uh, love the, the the soundtrack of scratches. It's it's a majestic work by Seller of Rats. I, I feel. I you know. I feel privileged to to have the only game soundtrack produced by Seller of Rats. This is like epic epic stuff. Uh, again, and I keep saying this, uh, a huge part of the Scratches experience is uh, is thanks to Cellar of Rats. Okay, so 
we have the claw and the tooth from a victim of the curse. We need uh, these two important elements to create the amulet. Uh, so we, what we, we need to do is turn them into dust. And we have just the right object to perform that action. Um, here we place the claw. I'm not sure if we could place. Okay, hang on. Let me. I, I'm going to save, save the game, you know, because we we all already have bad experiences with game saving during this live stream. Okay, no, I can. I need to to grind um, uh, the items each, you know, by ones. Uh, okay, so do this. You know, I actually, <coughs> I actually have um, a, a grinder just like this in my my place. I mean, I, I can't go to to look for it now, but it's just just like this. Uh, okay, now the tooth. We have dust from a victim and dust from the uh, from the claw, which represents the the feeling, the the, the feline uh, nature of the of 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 Dolom, the god that the Dalmar worshipped. Um, and we also needed this uh, this leaf from uh, from 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 South Africa as well. And pa, 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 yeah, one last thing. We need to go up upstairs. Yeah, I'm. I'm assuming most of you have played scratches and you know more or less what's happening with the story because it's it's quite intricate. There's a lot more, you know, to it. I mean. Uh, other than what, what I'm doing right now, I mean the journals are are long, but definitely worth uh, reading. Uh, it, the, the story is quite nuanced. Uh, so we actually we actually need to grab I thought I had grabbed this already okay now we have to re restart the game oops I think this is the only live stream where we actually had to restart the game and made a speed run because of the corrupt save game what are the odds but hey in, in a way we, we we made history right okay so um oh right I need a um, hang on I, I remember this one I need a lead from one of these cans where is it where is it where is it? What I need to do now is um, turn these uh, ingredients, the the dust from the claw, from the tooth, and the leaves, into a solid item. Um, pa, 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 um. hmm. Let's see. OK. 
Okay. I forgot this one. I forgot another puzzle in the game. Nothing serious, nothing serious. Um, I need something to put the ingredients. Maybe I have something already? No. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think it's actually... It's more simpler th than I thought. Um Okay, I need to check the wall through, I'm sorry. I kinda of forgot about that one. Uh it's the plush of the tooth, mix it on raw metal roll, just put it all. The can lead. Okay, so it is a lead from a can, but which can Okay, it's in the it's right over here. Hang on. I can't believe just how much I have uh, forgotten about this game. I mean, really. Um. Yeah, this that I think that. Damn table! I, I I missed the key the first time I I'm zoom I zoomed onto that table. Um, it's admittedly that that's that that's pixel hunt. That is pixel hunt because you know it's not just that the items are small. It's also that they they don't like um, they don't call your attention. It's not evident that you can grab that can lead. So uh, that's a bit unfair, I have to admit it. Okay, now... Oops. Um, I have to say this already, but I... This is maybe my, my favorite... This whole sequence is my favorite part of the whole game. Because it feels like you're doing something like... Does this make sense? What the hell am I doing? What is the game asking me to do, right? I mean, an amulet and use it on the mask. Um, it's like... Now that we have the amulet, the music has changed. That's an interesting uh, detail as well. Um, so, this is how Michael must have uh, felt as well, right? Doing all this. I mean, is, is there a point in doing all this? Um, am I losing my mind? I think those... We, we probably could have, you know, uh, avoided that evil laughter. I, I think the whispers and heavy breathing was uh, enough at this point. But still a nice uh, detail that when you uh, create the amulet suddenly everything goes like quiet and there's an even greater sense of impending doom and expectation. Now we have the amulet. I touched the stone to the branch and immediately felt a strange sensation. The amulet seemed to be vibrating. I was ready. But what we are going to do now is first save the game just in case because you never know and this part is I'm very happy with this part because all you're going to do all you everything you are going to do is just grab the amulet use it on the mask and yeah I just feel better uh, at first nothing seemed to happen, but then the atmosphere felt lighter, as if the house 
have been relieved of the monstrous burden. Um, something we did was very, very subtle. You may not have noticed, but the graphics become brighter in general. But okay, we also add some music, victorious music. Um, but it could be, you know, that everything is in your mind because nothing actually happened. You, you, you just wave a funny little thing in front of the va of, of the mask, and yeah, if there was a course, maybe there is no longer a course. But how can you know that? I mean, are we are we certain that there was a course in the house? This part is. I think it was very well executed. Because I, I think we, we really, after you know the comments we we, we read, uh, players were fooled. They were like, okay, maybe that was everything all there is to it, because since nothing ever happens in the game, you just use the amulet on the mask and nothing happens. Kind of made sense, right? Uh, but no, something else is going to happen now. Uh, if you recall, we had turned on the, we had uh, lit the fireplace in the beginning of the third day, and now, just by accident, there's nothing else. The the wood, you know, the the wood has uh, consumed, and uh, we see a hidden grating. Right? Okay. Now we go down. So, a few comments here. This is a really scary and, and powerful moment, I think. You know, we, in spite of, of all the flaws in the game, and I have mentioned so many during this playthrough, uh, so, so many, so many playthrough, uh, so many uh, flaws, um, I think the game has a, an excellent progression and you have no idea what's going to happen now in your first playthrough and this is very well e e executed. Um, so I gave Vlad from Cellar of Rats um, sort of carte blanche with the soundtrack, like he, he had the final say, you know. Um, but my um, the first take he did for this this particular scene uh, when you go down the fire, fireplace, there's a there's a track that I really love, and he insisted on changing it for the for the final game uh, so that it blended better with the rest of the soundtrack. So the soundtrack was more um, consistent. But I love that track so much that in the director's cut, when you trigger the alternate ending, uh, you hear that additional track at this uh, right location. To trigger that uh, alternate ending, what you have to do is try using the typewriter uh, at least 10 or half a dozen times before heading down the fireplace. The idea the, the, the logic behind that um, that course of action is that Michael tries to write his story, uh, he just loses his mind, and that alternate ending uh, goes to show that Michael has lost his mind because he was imagining everything. Uh, but what we are going to see now is the actual ending of the game, of course. So anyway, let's let's get going. Um, Remember, remember. If you ask, if you have questions, just uh, ask them. Um, if you recall the the boiler sequence, we see we see this door from this hole on the wall. Uh, so again, I have said this before, but the house is. Um, it's architecturally correct, so uh, all, all the, every the placement of all the rooms in the game uh, make sense uh, in a in a in actual spatial sense. Okay, so we, we we actually 
build the, the 3D house accordingly to, to make sure all the rooms were in the right place and what you are experiencing uh, is, is actually lo logical. So, um, we're going to unlock this and go inside because, yeah, I mean, what the heck, we, we have come this far. Uh, yeah, Michael, I mean, really, you're, you're just out of your mind. Who in his or her right mind would, would come this far, you know, and enter a dark, uh, forgotten place? You know, without, without no idea what you're going to find. So, um, before finishing the game, it, it's been said already that, uh, you know, uh, you, you may know this or not, but um, Scratches was inspired by the dream I have. I had uh, many, many years ago. I was, I was a kid. I think I had that dream when I was like had to be when I was uh, 12, 12 years old because I recall it was before we moved from uh, a previous house and I was very very young at that house but that dream kind of stuck with me for many many years and it was even simple it, it, it was a simple dream you know uh, I was just somewhere and I went in a sort of basement and when I Arrive, when, I, when I descend at, in this basement, I see a table with a, with a, with a chair and, and food on the table, as if, as, if, as if someone had been eating down here. Um, and what you're going to see now, the ending of Scratches, is pretty much the dream itself. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to uh, add a few more det details now about that that dream, but um, it is yeah. I mean the the whole idea of of scratches is just that that simple dream, and the whole story is just a build up uh, upon this this dream. You know, so uh, this is why. This is my, my advice to writers of game designers. If if you know, if you have the chance to know where your game is going, if you just know, you know, the the last moment of your game, you can create something powerful because everything you do is, uh, you know, is one step uh, further towards that uh, that goal. So uh, knowing where you're going is of utmost importance important when uh, you know doing a creative work that's just my advice you know um, so something else if you recall uh, hi to all the people that's just just uh, joining us right now uh, sorry that uh, this was a rather improvised live stream just to complete the ending um, do you remember the receipt in the attic uh, about uh, meat packers okay I mentioned the truck sequence that never made it into the game, not even the director's cut edition. The idea behind that uh, truck sequence and the receipt you uh, you see in the attic is to explain this. You see traces of raw meat. It appeared as, as if they had been dropped through the grating. So. The logic behind this, it is a bit contrived, but it works. You know, I, I did it to explain how the being living in the basement uh, had survived for so long. Because if you if you do the math, Milton leaves Blackwood Manor um, years before. The, the the events that Michael is experiencing right now. So how to explain how this mm, what we are who we are going to see now has been uh, surviving here for so long? Milton just ordered a truck company to deliver raw meat through uh, to the basement. His instructions were as simple as just throw the meat through through the grating 
and you can actually see this uh, grating in the front of the house so all the um, the the employee of the you know the the meat guy had to do is just to enter Blackwood Manor and throw meat inside the grating. Um, where's the money for that? If you speak to the bank clerk from the National Bank of Northumberland, you're going to realize that the, the bank account from the Blackwood ham family has been active has been joined activity uh, throughout all these years. So someone has been using that bank account. The explanation of that is this. And no, it's not Milton. It's not Milton, the guy that has been dropping meat through the grating. He could not, uh, you know, get himself to set foot upon uh, Blackwood Manor because he just uh, couldn't. Uh, he just couldn't tolerate it. But okay, if if you remember also, uh, Blackwood asks Milton. To do something unspeakable, to to just uh, do it, and what we have to deduct uh, after playing all this is that um, James has been asking Milton to kill the being inside this basement um, and to end the curse, you know, because this being is evil. That's what Blackwood thinks or believes. Uh, Milton, as a doctor, as someone who has an oath to, uh, you know, take care of all living beings on this earth, uh, he just couldn't do that. He just can't kill a living being. So uh, his intention at first is to become the caretaker of the manor and uh, someone, you know, the the, the guardian of of this being living in the basement. And he just can't stand any longer. He just can't stand the scratches. He can't stand this presence. This is that is when he leaves the house. What he does to keep the being alive is deal with the meat uh, packing company. So that's the whole explanation behind that. Okay, that's the original intention. Uh, something one one more thing. The teddy bear. That nursery theme is to invite you to make the connection between the teddy bear here and the nursery room in in the in the manor. So uh, just you should be able to deduct everything now. You should be able to deduct who has been living here all these years and who has uh, who is the the person behind the scratching noises and something else mm. a disgusting teddy bear covered in mud and dirt was lying on the ground it appeared to be bites that had ripped its neck remember the 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 newspaper uh, what Eva Mariani said ripped she would say that the throat of Catherine Blackwood was was ripped, so we have to assume that whoever has been toying around with this teddy bear is the person who killed Catherine Blackwood. Suddenly, the words of William Bailey concerning the body of Catherine echoed in my head. Ripped, she would say, and now we're hearing some movement. And I mean, there's only one more thing left to explore here, and I guess we just. <laughs> Why not? Uh, we could. I could. Do you want me to quit the game? If you are too scared, I can quit the game right now. Notice the ice. is creepy that is very very creepy <laughs> very very creepy um, and Michael just leaves <laughs> people hated the ending because they were like some people hated like wow wow what I had just seen I raced my car and left is there, any, is there anything more to it 
I'm not ashamed of what I did. That disfigured face is still stalking my nightmares, and I've never put foot inside a Victorian house ever since. But there's certainly one thing that I'm grateful for. So... It was thanks to my encounter below that house that I was able to finish my book. So the events of Blackwood Manor inspired Michael to finish his novel. Um, this is just... Pay, pay attention to, to this, this sequence. I'm going to explain a few more things now. Um, we don't know exactly how um, it inspired him. It's just that's something that works in his mind. But uh, the ending of Scratches, in a way, inspired him to, to finish his, his bloody novel. That's the meaning behind the scratches. Uh, of course, the person in the basement was uh, was Robin Blackwood, the the child of the Blackwood family, and uh, the meaning behind the scratches was that Robin was just digging up the walls and trying to get away from the from the basement. Um, people didn't like this ending because. Uh, it's like the game just suddenly ends, you know, you just you just see that final horror, that final moment, and there's nothing else to tell. My intention behind this ending, why I, I wouldn't change it, is that I, I think it's a truly pure Lovecraftian ending, you know? Um, in Lovecraft Tales, when the protagonist uh, meets, uh, encounters the final horror, there's nothing else to say. That's it. That was the point of the whole story. You know everything now, and that's when the story suddenly ends. Uh, it's supposed. It's meant to shock you. It's meant to leave you like uh, thinking, "Okay, what the heck has has just happened?" Um, but once you keep thinking about it, you you figure out the logic behind everything. Um, Asylum will do this in a way as well. I think it it does it even better. Uh, I'm really happy with that ending and I, I hope it will surprise you just as much um, but anyway a few a few pointers about this uh, the in the presence of Michael in Blackwood Manor does not change anything you know uh, many people pointed out that Michael leaves the door to the basement open so that suddenly Robin is free but you know, Robin was about to escape anyway, and this is something I like about the game. Michael, it, he's not even a hero or an anti-hero, he's just a silent spectator. Nothing of what Michael does in the manor has any consequence at all, unless you believe the curse is real and Michael has left the curse with his amulet. That flower, uh, the last scene that you see in the greenhouse, that flower, what is it supposed to mean? Uh, is it just a flower? Uh, or maybe it, it means that the curse has, has been lived, you know, but Blackwood, Blackwood mentioned that, um, that uh, the, the plants in the greenhouse began dying from the moment he brings the mask in the manor. Uh, so if you believe the course is real, then maybe Michael did something to the mask and now the f flowers are growing again because there's no more cures. But if you believe the thalidomide theory is real, which is, you know, uh, thalidomide caused birth defects in, in child uh, at around the same time as the, you know, as the event in Scratches, this is actual real story. Uh, if you believe that's real and Robin is a consequence of just bad luck with the drug, and there's no cures, and just Blackwood went insane and had his son locked up in a basement, uh, then maybe that flower has no meaning at all. Whichever the case. Uh, we must assume that, yes, it is Robin who killed Catherine Blackwood. Uh, he was deformed and we just, we just have to assume that he ripped off Catherine's uh, uh, throat. Maybe, I, know, I don't know, she was breastfeeding and that's when Robin 
kills her accidentally or not if you believe the course is real so uh, the idea is that you know this is that is up, up to you how you interpret the ending of scratches that is up to you and uh, I'm not going to give you that final answer of course I don't know if you ha if I have more notes um, something else to tell you okay yeah about the dream I mentioned the the dream um, you know all I saw in the dream was that just white creature suddenly appearing from the shadows and approaching me um, that's almost the same that's a just pretty much the same sequence of events that you experience in the end of the game itself so uh, it's really funny how I I kept this dream inside my head for literally maybe possibly a decade even and made it into an actual game uh, that's that's really really funny so um, okay folks we have been playing for an almost an hour already and it's pretty late here so uh, I will need to finish the stream now but I promise uh, in a few days let's play the last visit uh, I will reveal a few more things uh, the last visit is pretty interesting because it's a nice coda to the whole uh, Scratches story and, uh, and I, maybe I will uh, reveal a few more, you know, details. I I, I had, you know, took note uh, for this uh, stream. And yes, I, I owe you asylum, and I am going to do a playthrough, not a full playthrough, of course. Uh, but I'm going to show you a bit of, of asylum soon as well. So, um, can I? I'm really sorry about the crazy nature of this. Uh, of these uh, streams, uh, many unexpected things happen, but I'm I'm glad that we have finally completed scratches in maybe just like five hours in total. Um, and yeah, I'll be back soon. It's been just great having you there. I had a really really fun time sharing this with you, relieving the game with you. Uh, it's been. <laughs> Uh, relieving experience for me um, so uh, yeah I'm, I'm just glad we did this so uh, see you again soon and uh, I'll keep in touch bye